Okay, so we're finishing off chapter four, forces and friction. Our last objective that we have is looking at um, forces that are not parallel to the plane. So the example that we use is a box that's sitting on a surface and here's our box and it's sitting on a surface and instead of having a force acting horizontally uh, what we might have is a force that is pushing downwards at an angle or potentially pulling upwards at an angle. Okay, so let's talk about our strategy for dealing with this. Well, we're going to still look at our box the exact same way that we have already. So we have a weight that's pushing down. The ground will provide a reaction back. If we're pushing to the left, we're going to have some friction that is resisting that and pushing to the right. And the only thing that's different now is that our push provides a downwards component okay, and also a horizontal component. Okay, so we have a couple different components that come out of that. All right? And so depending on whatever angle we have here, we're going to have a vertical component, or P sine of theta, and we're going to have a horizontal component, P cos of theta. How we approach these problems is going to be consistent every time. We're going to use our equations of equilibrium, which we've already used when we talked about beings. So sum of forces up equals sum of forces down, and sum of forces to the left equals sum of forces to the right. So when we quantify that, so let's look at sum of forces up. Uh, in this case, what I have is R that's pushing up is going to be equal to what's pushing down. Well, I have a W pushing down, and I have a P sine theta that's pushing down. If I look at my forces to the left equals forces to the right, force to the left, P cos of theta is equal to my force of friction. Okay, so I'm left with two equations that aren't all that much use to me on their own, but where they become really effective is when I add them to mu is equal to force of friction over R. Um, so I have force of friction, I have R, so mu ends up being equal to P cos theta over W plus P sine of theta. And what I have is an equation that involves the different components of P, the push or the pull, the angle that's being pushed at, the weight of the block, and the mu value, the coefficient of friction. So this is for me pushing in a downwards direction. Okay. I also have a variation of the equation which happens here. Um, if I'm pulling upwards, mu is equal to P cos theta upon W plus, oops, sorry, 
plus minus p sine theta. So same equation, and you could always use this as your starting point for any questions moving forward. So um, figuring out if you have a push or pull, choosing your equations, and then using that to solve your, your values. We're going to work through right from the starting point, so up here, um, and work through sort of the process um, in each of our next example problems. Okay, so example number 11, we have a pump that's pulled across the floor at a constant speed by a force applied at an angle of 30 degrees. Find the coefficient of friction if the mass of a pump is 1,200 kilograms. Okay, so a couple key things just to see here. Um, it is being pulled, um, and we do have an angle, and we do have a force. Um, so if we're looking at units, this guy is okay. Um, 1,200 kilograms is not, so we'll want to right away convert that to weight. Oops, time is 9.81 meters per second squared is equal to 11.772 newtons, which is my weight. Okay, I'm going to set up my little diagram. I'll draw in my vectors, so 11.772 newtons pushing down. I have a pull, so it's going to be an upwards direction, P equal to 1500 newtons. That happens at an angle of 30 degrees. The pull um, is going to be Interact it by a force of friction, so friction pulling back, and the ground provides a reaction pushing back up. My pull is, can be divided into an x and y component. This guy being p sine of theta, which is equal to 1500 times the sine of 30 degrees, he ends up being worth 750 newtons. This guy is p cos of theta, which is 1500 times the cos of 30 which is equal to 1299 newtons. If you're given a problem where you know your force and you know the angle, uh, sometimes it can be a lot easier just for the math in that if you do solve your components right away to a value, then when we use our sum of forces and that, we're only dealing with numbers as opposed to mixes of variables and other things. So. Um, just a bit of advice for you. So we'll continue with our sum of forces up. It has to equal our sum of forces down. Our sum of forces to the left has to equal our sum of forces to the right. So if we quantify what's going up, we have an R and we have a 750 newtons. And that's balanced by the weight pushing down, 11,772 newtons. And I could bring that 750 across to the other side, and that would give me R equal to 11022 newtons. I have sum of forces to the left, have to equal sum of forces to the right. So pushing to the left would be, in this case, my force of friction, which is equal to what's pushing to the right, which is my p cos theta, 
or in this case, I worked it out to 12.99 newtons. The question asked me to find the coefficient of friction. So mu is equal to force of friction divided by r is equal to 12.99 newtons divided by 11.022 newtons and I get a value of 0 0.118 as my coefficient of friction. Okay, So this is the easiest version of the problem um, where you're given P, you're given your, your angle, and all you're asked for is finding your coefficient of friction. Um, we go through the same steps, so draw your di diagram, break up your vectors into components. You've got your sum of forces. And then we have the friction equation as our final component to link it all together. OK, let's do one more problem. OK, so this one's a little more complicated because I don't know the force. So I'm trying to find the force. All right, so this one's definitely a, a more challenging problem than the last one. Same process that we're going to go through. Okay, so first of all, I'm just going to look through my question and make any changes to my units. So I have an angle, I have a coefficient of friction, I have 1,400 kilograms, so my weight in this case, 1,400 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared is equal to... 13734 newtons. I can draw my diagram. So draw it over here. So here's my here's my block sitting on the ground. So 13734 pushing down. Load is being pulled. Draw that over here. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to call it P. My block will have a force of friction resisting that, as well as an R value pulling up. My P is going to get broken up into components. So I have a, a vertical and a horizontal component. And that's at 22 degrees. So I don't know what P is, but I do know that I could calculate out, I guess, my, ang my, my trig values here. So P cos of 22. Cos of 22 is equal to 0.927, so this guy is equal to 0.927p. This is my p sine theta. Sine theta is equal to 0 0.375, so I have 0.375p. And I think that's about all I know. So now I transition over to sum of forces up. It has to equal sum of forces down. Up is going to be R plus 0.375P is equal to 13734 end newtons. My sum of forces to the left has to equal my sum of forces to the right, which says that my force of friction has to equal 0.927p.
the thing that links it is going to be mu is equal to force of friction upon r. So this guy looks like he's in a good position to be added into that equation. Um, for this one, I want to isolate for r, which says r is going to be equal to 13734 newtons minus 0.375p. So this guy, um, mu is equal to 0.927p upon 13734 newtons minus 0.375p. I'm going to swap, um, or rearrange my equation a little bit here. So mu, I'm going to add him in, so he's 0 0.55 is equal to 0 0.927p upon 13734n minus 0.375p. I'm going to bring the bottom half here over and multiply it by 0 0.55. So 0 0.55 times 13734n minus 0 0.55 times 0 0.375p is equal to 0 0.927p. So 7553.7 this guy across and multiply him out is equal to 0 0.927p plus 0 0.206p, 7553.7 is equal to 1.133p, or finally when I divide 7 1,553.7 by 1.133p, or one, I can be left with p, and p is equal to 6667 newtons. A much more complicated question in terms of the math and rearranging in order to find p. There may be other ways to work at your equations, but you're always going to have your same starting point and process. So one, start out with your drawing, two, break out into components, three, use your equilibrium equations, and then it gets linked together with your friction equation. Okay, there's a couple of uh, assignment questions on this. Best of luck. Let me know if you need any help.